So now that we have Debian installed, a good idea is to save our place or save the, the current state that it's in right now. So what we would want to do right now is just go up to machine and then ACPI shutdown. And that will cause Debian to shut down and now our virtual machine is stopped. What we want to do now is we want to take a snapshot of its current state. And the method that to, you use to do this can vary depending on if you're using Hyper-V or VMware. But in VirtualBox, it's pretty simple. Um, you just go up to uh, the tab for your virtual machine, click on these this icon here. And you can see this icon here called Snapshots. Click on that. What we have here is a listing of the current snapshots of the machine. And currently, there's nothing. So what we'll do is we'll click the Take button and name the snapshot something like uh, Post Install. Click OK. So what this has done is this has take a, taken a snapshot in time of the virtual machine's current state. So if we ever need to revert the machine back to a previous time, we can do that by restoring the virtual machine to this state. So for example, if we want to move it back to post install, we would click on post install on this menu and then click restore. And it would restore the virtual machine back to that point in time. So now that we have our machines uh, saved, we can go ahead and restart the virtual machine and continue on the installation process for MirthConnect. Okay, so first things first, let's go ahead and start updating some things. Um, you can see I've changed the name of my virtual machine from Mirth to Mirth Test. That's totally not important. Um, it can This name can be basically whatever you want it to be. Um, I already have a machine called Mirth on my network, and you can't have two, two machines with the same name. So uh, you don't have to change yours. You're, you're just going to stay as Mirth. So what we'll go ahead and do is log in as root with the password for root that we entered in, in the beginning, and it's logged us in as the root user. Now, a good idea when you first start up any fresh install of, of Linux is to update the packages. And to do that, we type in apt update and it will fetch the possible updates that are available. And you can see right now there's nothing that's available. Um, all packages are up to date. But if there were packages we could get, we would do aptY full upgrade. And that would install the new versions of the packages and keep our machine up to date. What we need to do now, though, is we need to install some software that um, Mirth is going to need. So I'm going to press Control L. All that does is clear the screen. Um, you can also type in clear. It does the same thing. So what we want to do is we want to install MariaDB and wget, which will allow us to fetch files from the internet. So type in apt install MariaDB hyphen server and wget. Press enter. That's going to show you the things it's going to want to install to be able to do that. So we've got to click OK or click uh, press Y and then enter. And it will start installing the packages. OK, so once it's installed, what we need to do now is describe our database to the database system. We need to program in the tables and the fields and the users and all that. So there's two ways you can do it. You can do it one through the interactive mode, which is more complicated because it's more prone to errors, or we could write a SQL file, which is going to be executed by the database system. And in this case, we're going to write a file uh, that's going to be executed. So what we want to do is we want to type in nano and then the name of the file we want to make. So I'm going to call it mirth.sql. And that will open up this text editor where we can start typing in the description of our database. So what we'll need to do first is um, create the user for the database. So this text editor um, is just like a normal text editor, except you can't use a mouse. Um, but you can use the up and down arrow keys on your keyboard to move the cursor around. You know, typing and backspace work fine. So it's, it's not too much different from like Notepad. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to create the user Mirth that's going to be able to access the database. We're going to do create user mirth 
at localhost. identified by password. In this case, password, I'm just going to leave it as password, but if you're doing your own server, you probably want to change password to something that's not um, as obvious. Um, but for this example, on this particular machine, I'm not going to worry about it. So I'm going to also then create, create the database called mirth. Um, each of these strings need to be terminated with a semicolon, and that's just how SQL works. So it's going to when we run this file, it's going to read each individual line and interpret it as if we're they're typing it in. So next we're going to set the permissions for the Mirth user so it's able to access the database and do things. So we're going to do grant all on Mirth period star that it's going to associate everything um, in that case with the Mirth user to Mirth at localhost. Again, doing the password with grant option. So this is going to allow our Mirth user that we just made to access and modify the database, which is going to be required by Mirth Connect. So in this case, what we want to do is That this for flush privileges may not be necessary, but it's, I'm going to do it anyway. Um, in this case, what we want to do is we want to switch to our main database. So after we have flush flush privileges, we're going to use Mirth, which is going to select database the database Mirth that we just created on line two. And now we want to actually describe the table for the database that we're going to need to use. So I'm going to create a table called patient, open with the semi with the parentheses. And now we're going to tell the table, we're going to tell the database what the table is supposed to look like. So I'm going to do ID int not null primary key. Uh, this is because in, in, data, in database systems, every table needs to have a, at least one primary key. Um, auto increment. So the database key or the table key is going to be um, an integer, not null, so it's required to be there. It's a primary key and it's auto incrementing, so we don't need to manually increment the database field for every entry that comes in. So also going to do patient ID int, which we may not even need to have a patient ID, but I'm just going to put it in there anyway. Um, last name is a variable character array with 60 characters not null so not null just if you're not used to SQL not null just basically means that it cannot be empty uh, if you send a record into this anything with not null cannot be left empty same thing for the first name and now I'm going to enter in the um, Vital signs. Okay, and after that's entered in, this is just the standard stuff that the Welsh Allen's going to send to just record vital signs information. Um, we're going to now go to a new line, press enter, do a close parentheses, and then a semicolon. So it's going to create that table with all those individual fields. So just go ahead and look at the the thing here and make sure that you know everything's spelled correctly there's no misplaced commas um, commas should only be at the end of the line shouldn't there be any commas in the middle um, if it looks okay go ahead and hold down control press o it's going to ask you if you want to write the file you can let go of control press enter so as you can see it's wrote 16 lines now we can press control x and it's put us back to the command line. Now, if we do ls, you can see our script there called mirth.sql. And if you do cat, type an m and press uh, tab to autocomplete, it will print out the contents of that file. 
So now we want to execute this in the SQL environment. So what we're going to do is MariaDB, and you're going to do a um, greater than sign pointing to the left, and then mirth.sql. And what that's going to do is it's going to, to take the contents of mirth.sql, the file we just made, and send it over to MariaDB to be executed. So press enter. And it looks like I have an error. So let's see. So the error in this case is that I misspelled identified. I left out the second I, or the third I. So what we do is nano mirth.sql. It opens the file back up, and we can use the cursors to move around. I'm going to insert the missing I. And I also missed the one down here as well. So now control O, enter, and then control X. And we've just written those changes to the file. So now we can, once again, MariaDB, Mirth.sql. And if it comes up like this, where you run it, and there's no messages that come up afterwards, that means it's run okay. And we can check that. We go and type in MariaDB. It will start up the database system. We can do use Mirth, semicolon. So it says the database has changed. We can do show tables, semicolon. See so how our patient table, we can do describe patient. And it will show you the structure of the database we just made. So now we can do quit. And now we're back to where we were before. And now is a good time to, uh, as long as everything looks okay and everything's running all right, uh, it's a good time to shut down H now, shut down the virtual machine, and take another snapshot. So back up here, I'm going to go take another snapshot. I'm going to do, let's call it MariaDB installed. Press OK. So now we have two instances of this machine. We have post install, and we have just after we've just now where we've completed the MariaDB installation. So if something goes wrong, we can, we can roll it back to a previous time and redo a step. Uh, this makes it a lot more straightforward.